Humans are naturally inquisitive creatures. Since the beginning of time, our burning curiosity has compelled us to push the boundaries and continually explore the uncharted. Deep waters, in addition to space, are one of the least understood. Additionally, certain marine species with monstrous appearances have been found down there. But what causes sea monsters to grow to such a size? And what enormous creatures could we locate in the deep sea? The deep sea is a region of our world that is special. It is cold, dark, and under great pressure, yet it is home to an incredible variety of animals. However, little is understood regarding the biology and behavior of creatures in the deep sea. Defined as 650 feet below when sunlight stops penetrating and reaching the bottom of trenches over seven miles below the ocean's surface, our capacity to view and analyze them has never been better. Furthermore, marine species, primarily invertebrates or animals without backbones, can grow to enormous sizes in the deepest and coldest regions of the ocean. So, are giant sea creatures mistakes? Well, that depends on how you perceive the situation. Humans are often fascinated by organisms that are at the extremes of size. Just as the glimpse of a beautiful blue whale is far more cherished than a tiny tuna fish, the little bee hummingbird of Cuba is much more prized than a typical homing pigeon. Ancient legends are entertaining because of this, but in the situations mentioned above, none of the animals can be considered to be an error because they have all developed in different ways to fit in and mix with their surroundings. The same is true for our enormous sea crabs, our enormous Pacific octopus, and our deep water isopods. Squids, sea spiders, worms, and several other organisms can develop to proportions that dwarf those of their related species in other parts of the world. This condition is known as gigantism. Deep sea gigantism is the tendency for species of invertebrates and other deep sea dwelling animals to be larger than their shallower water relatives across a large taxonomic range. According to Teara, the Encyclopedia of New Zealand, the giant squid Mesonicatuthis hamiltoni in subantarctic seas is around 14 times longer than the common arrow squid Nototodarus sloni found in New Zealand. But what is it about deep icy seas that enables organisms to grow so large? Since certain deep sea species develop to such enormous sizes, biologists aren't entirely sure why, but they do have some intriguing possibilities. Since animals are largely made of water, which is not easily compressed, one would imagine that deep sea pressure would keep them smaller rather than larger. However, this is not the case. Some think that the organism's buoyancy, which frees it from the need to defy gravity, is what enables it to grow so huge. Others encounter that it may be because survival requires it, and the extremely cold waters make it possible. So let's get into it. To do just that, we must go back a few years to 2006, when a biologist named Craig R. McLean et al. investigated the gradient from shallow oceans to depths utilizing the structure of a terrestrial system oceanic islands. Because they are cut off from other land areas, islands primarily produce their own native biodiversity by diversifying the few creatures that do make it there. With fewer resources, rivals, and predators, island fauna frequently follows what is described as the island rule, in which small-bodied creatures, such as the massive Galapagos tortoise, grow bigger on islands. Additionally, the deep sea is unconnected to the rest of the ocean and has few supplies. And following a Cenozoic mass extinction event, much of the deep sea species evolved from shallow water immigrants. In short, the deep sea, according to McLean et al., functions similarly to an island. So basically, much of the food they receive comes from shallower waters, and only a fraction of it makes it down to sea level, and a lot of energy is wasted in the process. And as you probably recall, from all the American high school teen movies, the bigger bully usually gets your lunch. And it is similar to what is found in deep water. When food is scarce, being the largest fish on the block might be advantageous. And the benefits don't end there. Being a larger beast allows you to travel faster and locate a mate easily. They can store food better and have more effective metabolisms. Big predators may thus eat more and retain their energy for a longer period of time when something like a large cadaver floats down to deeper seas. 
According to some experts, with the lack of numerous competitors capable of feeding on larger species, there is an evolutionary opportunity for increased body size. Others contend that cold temperatures may also be a significant aspect to take into account. Because cold temperatures in the deep water can foster gigantism by severely reducing the metabolisms of creatures. We may take the green land shark, Somniosis microcephalus, as an example. They develop and mature at a slower rate than other sharks. This monster of an animal can grow up to 24 feet tall, which is nearly half the height of the Hollywood sign, and weigh up to 1.5 tons, which is roughly two and a half times the weight of a grizzly bear. But it takes time for the growth to occur. It is not an instantaneous increase. How long, you might be wondering? Well, they only attain complete sexual maturity when they are 150 years old, and they only grow by 0.4 inches a year. Talk about a late bloomer. However, this is owing in part to a lack of predators in the deep water, which allows these sharks to survive for so long and grow so enormous. The oxygen temperature idea is another less well-known explanation for how they may have reached this size. This proposes that gigantism developed via a combo of cold-driven low metabolic oxygen demand and abundant oxygen supply due to deep ocean upwelling surrounding Antarctica, as well as low biological demand. The hypothesis that temperature oxygen interactions restrict body size is not new. Von Bertalanffy was the first to notice that when temperatures rise, ectotherms' metabolic oxygen demand rises faster than their oxygen supply. This results in a body size at which diffusive supply cannot meet demand, which means that at higher temperatures, big animals have a more difficult time matching oxygen intake with whole body oxygen requirements. So basically, the Southern Ocean's high oxygen supply to demand ratio is hypothesized to allow organisms to grow to bigger body sizes without experiencing increased oxygen shortages. Gigantism does not exclusively happen in the deep oceans. The presence of gigantism is particularly common closer to Antarctica. In shallower water, enormous sponges, worms, sea spiders, and even enormous single-celled animals can be found. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, there is a lot of oxygen in these polar seas. However, because of the low metabolic rates caused by the cold water temperatures, Woods, an ecophysiologist who has studied polar gigantism, noted that creatures in these habitats consume oxygen very slowly. It's likely that growth restraints are relaxed since the animal's oxygen demand is much outweighed by the ample oxygen supply. Can those organisms from the deep sea endure in shallow waters? If only they could have been there already. Some people might believe that the low pressure in the deep ocean will kill them. However, higher temperatures, not pressure, are more likely to do so when bringing deep sea species up to the surface. According to a lot of research, deep sea animals can survive a variety of pressures. As long as we can keep them cold, we regularly catch creatures at depth and bring them to the surface alive. Either they are transported across the nation alive, or they are kept in an aquarium in the lab. Some pelagic creatures also conduct incredible vertical migrations over the course of 24 hours that can cover thousands of meters and multiple pressure levels. Basically, exposing a low-pressure suited species to high pressure would typically kill it, whereas deep-sea creatures appear to be resilient to pressure release. Deep-sea giants are evidence of evolution via adaptation, according to everything we have discussed today. As we already know, the deep sea is like its own planet, complete with reefs, deep sea vents, underwater rivers, lakes, and volcanoes. Every nook and cranny of our planet is alive with life. The deepest sections of the sea provide some of the most amazing light shows in the world. From dazzling corals to lanternfish and comb jellies, these species have mastered the art of thriving in hostile environments. It is quite incredible to consider that there is such an abundance of life hiding out in the deep seas, ignorant of one another. We foresee finding numerous more bizarre and interesting animals that have yet to be identified and understood as we continue to probe the uncharted regions of our planet. So what do you think of everything we discussed in today's video? Were you expecting them to be this massive due to the temperatures down there? And if you have any more fascinating theories, please share them in the comments section below.